Today I'm going to be talking to you how I made these resin wood tiles and some of the pitfalls that I encountered during the process. This project started out with this image of a wood tile design that I thought looked very interesting. Now there are tiles out there like Hearst Arts that have a similar pattern, but you'll notice that those have like a little design on the outside of the inch tile, which means those tiles would not look the same as the tiles that I saw from the picture. Even though there are probably pre-made tiles out there that look exactly like this, I just thought it'd be interesting to make something that was uniquely my tiles. So to start off, I decided on the easy way to get this texture. Use coffee stirrers glued to a piece of paper and then cut out the pattern using an old Hearst Arts tile. This did, however, give me a very good opportunity to try out my brand new utility knife, which by goodness does a much better job than my Stanley uh, standby. Though I must say my new Stanley ruler does a very good job. So, you know, I guess, you know, pick the right tools for the right job. And at the end, I was left with these perfect, well, actually imperfect little inch squares of the sort of design that I wanted my flooring to be. The slightly different coloration on the coffee stirrers made it very easy to line these up properly. And when the material started to bend a little bit, I used a very sophisticated method to fix this. To start out, I did a test mold of a two inch tile grid and it seemed to work out pretty good. Sharp detail from the coffee stirrers and my cheap uh, mold making material seemed to make a pretty decent mold from this. Now, it was at this point that I noticed something that I thought was going to give me troubles. It seemed like I was getting these tiny little micro bubbles uh, on the surface of my casted resin here. And I wasn't sure if this was because I screwed up the molding process or what. Now it turns out once I primed and painted these, you could still see the wood grain. Those little bubbles were completely absent. So I felt confident in moving on to the four by four tile squares. I measured a double layer of foam core, uh, four inches by four inches, and arranged a grid on it that I would fix the little squares that I had crafted from the coffee stirrers. And starting out, it looked pretty good. Everything was flat and it was ready to attempt to be molded. Now I did coat it with a coating of the Black Magic Crafts system of Mod Podge and paint. Just to make sure there wasn't any weird issues with the coffee stir or something like that. I didn't know if there was some sort of chemical they were treated with or if there was going to be any issues. Probably not. So I made another mold for a 2x2 two two piece and I got a large plastic container for the 4x4 four four mold. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where things started to go wrong. See, nothing went wrong with the smaller mold. The little 2x2 two two mold, no issues with the previous uh, molding process, so I had no idea there would be an issue here. And the larger mold, well, I figured if I had put blue tack on it, and very carefully, with scientific accuracy, weighed it down very specifically, it would attach firmly to the bottom of this plastic container and I wouldn't have any issues with it and also I wouldn't have any issues with uh, the coffee stirrers raising up. So I figured a little bit of compression and I would be all ready to go. Oh, look at that. Guys, you're not going to see this kind of precision home <laughs> crafting anywhere else on the internet. I guarantee it. So this is the El Cheapo version of the tin cured casting resin. And it's got a very long work time, which is good. And I took my time stirring it up, making sure there was no bubbles in there. And I started the very slow process of pouring it in. Thank you. 
To help raise up any bubbles that might still be in the rubber material, I used my handy dandy cordless drill to uh, shake up the container a little bit, but I think that only made things worse for the next step. The one thing that I did not take into consideration, buoyancy. This material is just so light that even in the dense rubber uh, tin cured material, it started to rise up, uh, breaking away from the blue tack bonds. And so I had to redo it, this time with hot glue, which I wish I would have uh, known to do uh, in the beginning. Uh, but again, you know, even again, like even the hot glue, I was so lucky that that happened because it just started to completely take off the layer of paper from the foam core. And once again, I have to reiterate, this is not the easy peel stuff. Uh, this is the stuff that supposedly doesn't peel easy, but even even that just peeled off really quickly. So so once again, I, I'm so lucky that I got one good mold from this. So I was able to make, you know, six or seven uh, pieces, and I could probably make more. The mold's still intact, so yeah, I was, I was very lucky with that. So re-pouring that same material, I was able to get one usable mold. And here I am using my patented empty box slash cordless driver rumble thing to make sure there's not any significant bubbles from the resin. And the only minor issue that I ran into was because there was exposed styrofoam foam core on the ends. It was very difficult to demold the first example of my tiles. But the section that mattered, that lovely texture on top, came out looking just fine. Look at that. Even better than the small one. I had some bits and pieces here you had to carve off, but nothing really that labor-intensive. And it had that slightly imperfect look that I really wanted to go for. After some painting and trying to match that pattern, I think this turned out to be very good. You see, uh, I wanted this to match up with my Dwarven Forge tiles, and those have kind of like an uneven thing going as well. And you know what? I just like the looks of this, and it really came out looking pretty much like the picture, except a little bit lighter. But I like the way these specifically look, and also... I did some quick paint versions, which actually match up to these really well. So I'm going to call this project done. So I learned a bunch of lessons, uh, obviously. When you're using lighter materials like foam core and you're making a mold, make sure it is glued down securely with hot glue and not blue tack. Uh, secondly, uh, foam core, uh, it's going to start to peel up after a while when using a project like this the little uh, um, coffee stirs is just kind of pull up on the edges which is just going to pull up the layer of paper that the foam core is connected to this is not the easy peel stuff but it's still after a while it still started pulling up regardless if I was to do this again I would maybe use these uh, these unfinished wood squares you can buy these like a lot of places for super cheap and I would maybe not use the coffee stir method because even though that worked out good for this, it was a little bit of pain. A pain. And if you're going to put that much work into something like this, even though this turned out great, I could have gotten a more unique design by doing my own sculpting uh, with another material, perhaps like green stuff or something like that. So if I do something that requires more uh, details, I will definitely do that next time. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video about me making my resin wood tiles. Uh, if you have had your own misadventures with mold making stuff or anything like that, please let me know in the comments below. Have a great day, and as always, thank you for watching the video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how I made these resin wood tiles and some of the pitfalls that I encountered during that progress. 
That's right, everybody. I left the bad take in on purpose because I'm lazy, okay? I'm lazy.